Well, today we're going to talk about germ theory nihilism. Now, hold on a second. You're going to say, germ theory denialism? Is that a thing? Um, <laughs> unfortunately, um, yes, yes, that is a thing. Um, but where does this all come from, you may be asking? Well, surprise, surprise, this came from um, a link someone had posted to me. Uh, came from Natural News. Now, let's get one thing first before we even get to discussing the whole germ denialism theory. Why is this pushed? This is pushed because uh, the guy who came up with this, it supports their idea that um, they are right and that science and the whole medical profession is completely wrong and that we've had it wrong for years and as you'll soon see uh, it's one ridiculous uh, journey after another but as you will see and see this is exactly the same way that creationists treat the theory of evolution Bear that in mind. <laughs> so, let's start at the very beginning. Germ theory itself was called, was come, uh, was came, was well, discovered. Well, <laughs> the theory itself was introduced by a guy called Louis Pasteur. Now, everyone knows um, who he is and what he came up with. But why did he came, come up with it? And why all this? As I said, germ theory denialism. And who is Anton Burkapp? The guy who was the guy who apparently stole from Pasteur. He didn't at all. But <laughs> let's begin. So, way back, um, the early sort of late eighteen hundreds, France was going under a huge um, drive for silk. But a massive problem happened. Um, the, it was a huge. Um, they didn't know what it was, but something was causing silkworms to die off um, massively. Now, they discovered that it was this um, germ that was causing it. And they wanted to know. They, the, it's the silk, entire silk industry of France commissioned the Academy of Science to find out what was going on. And along comes uh, Louis Pasteur and... Um, and and the camp, or the camp. I think it's the thing that's how you said. I nearly forgot his name then. Uh, so, what did they do? Well, both came um, for their theories, but both came from it from very different ends. Now, we'll start with the camp because at the time, the prevailing theory had been at that time was that all disease was caused by a miasma. Now, miasma is a series or a environmental factor that causes the germs to grow. So it's not the germs that are the cause of your disease, it is the environment that causes these germs to grow from the disease. Now all of a sudden, as I said right at the very beginning, this supports their, you know, the naturalist view of disease. Now this makes sense if you think about it within the confines of medicine at the time of the 18th century. The prevailing wisdom at that time, if you had a disease, um, doctors would prescribe you um, to go, if you were in England, to go off to somewhere like uh, Bath or go to the seaside to get good air because it was considered that the miasmas there were curative and would sort out uh, your body. Now already you should be able to see what I said at the beginning, this fits their theory. So, um, the, uh, so, he, so he went at it from that way. Now Pasteur came up with his germ theory. Now germ theory is the exact opposite. Germ theory is that germs, viruses, cause the disease and he proved that with his fermentation test now this is where 
things get murky because first of all they accuse um Pasta of stealing uh Debec um you know Debec's idea. Oh sorry, no, um Debo, yeah. I'm gonna keep on calling him Debec for the rest of the video now. But yeah, so that's but he never stole it. These two these two guys had completely opposite ideas and Pasteur proved his his theory worked with his fermentation test. He showed that some of the diseases and germs completely um, isolated from the atmosphere can grow and cause the disease in question. Um, and this was again germ theory created. This was the start of modern medicine. So as you can see, people who um, are supporting these alternative um, ideas want to try and basically undermine Pasteur as much as possible. Because if you can undermine Pasteur, if you can somehow make people think that actually germ theory is wrong and that our entire medical knowledge and, you know, is based on something wrong, then obviously they must have the right answer. That And that's all it is. It's a trick to try and con people into thinking that their ideas and their theory is right. And this is exactly the same way that creationists do to the theory of evolution. They go, oh, the theory of evolution's wrong. Darwin didn't know about all this stuff. Well, guess what? Darwin, in many cases, didn't know about a lot of the stuff that we know now. That doesn't stop his theory um, being proven true. Just as germ theory. Uh, Robert Koch was the next guy uh, in the sort of... The, the sort of the germ theory journey, shall we say. He used Pasteur's theory and he built upon it. He proved a lot of what Pasteur was saying was right. And even now, when you look, you know, electron microscope, electronic microscopes to look at germs and all our, you know, modern medical knowledge now, Pasteur is right. And to try and undermine, uh, at this point, a hundred years of medical knowledge to try and prove that you know some crazy theory uh, based on natu naturopathy or whatever or whatever they want uh, the, that particular person's peddling it all comes down to they want to convince you to put your hand in your pocket and give money to them and not the medical establishment why because as I've said in my um, the MD Emperor has no clothes they get money from it, and they get a lot of money from it. Remember, they always say, oh, there's no money in alternative health therapy. If you don't believe me, go and Google how much uh, the alternative health industry is worth, and then come back to me and say that there's no money. And this also ties into science denialism. Because this is growing as well, and it's unbelievable the rate that um, some of the stuff is coming. And the fa very fact that germ theory denialism is a thing is worrying. Because this could put people's health, general health, at risk. I mean, what if someone actually in power um, was believed uh, in this thing? That they believe that, you know, Louis, pa Louis Pasteur was... Um, you know, a faker and, you know, actually, you know, bando, you know, um, but, you know, uh, the other theory was correct all the time. You know, that we could waste, end up wasting, you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds looking into a theory that we know goes nowhere and we've shown goes nowhere. And then if you even watch it, say take this down to like you know your common everyday average citizen if they start to believe this then they'll go not go to the doctor get the real help they need and instead go down the route of doing gerson therapy cupping whatever crazy woo woo treatment they can get their hands on and then they'll put their lives at risk and then they'll die as, as a result and this is why we need to um, challenge these people and say, hey, 
what you're saying is 100% wrong. You have no basis of evidence to say that. And, you know, I'm sorry, but it's the exact same things we say to creationists. You do not have any evidence to support your ideas other than a belief. And your belief <laughs> in what you're talking about is 100% flawed.